Desflo writes, I've been seeing vellum sheets popping up for sale at various sites, including two peas. I've always thought vellum was pretty, but struggled with how to use it. Glitter Girl, can you help Desflo validate her fondness of vellum? Of course I can. We do have a return of vellum in the store and in scrapbooking as a whole. And so I have a few different options to share with you today that are in the store. There are three different patterned vellums from the Dear Lizzie collections. There are two in Neapolitan and one in the new Fifth and Frolic. And I have the two from Neapolitan here. And one is a pink polka dot and the other is a cloud print. And they work really well with a variety of papers, but one of my favorite things is the October afternoon pattern papers are all that kind of vintage cream base rather than a sharp white. And it can be a little bit difficult to mix and match them with other papers from other brands and get the cream tone right. And But the vellum, because it's actually a white paper but it's translucent, when you put it against the October afternoon paper, the cream shows through and the match ends up perfect, which means it's great together. So this is um, the... Hall uh, Halloween, a happy birthday print called Buttercream from October Afternoon's Cakewalk collection. And it looks great with the pink polka dot from Neapolitan. And it would work just these two together and then your photos on top of this. Or you can use the vellum as a bridging layer. So say you have another pattern paper that works pretty well with this, but it's not quite right because it's maybe there's a bit too much white and not enough cream in the base of that pattern paper, you can use this to bridge the gap, put the other paper on top, and then if you have the vellum as your layer that goes around the edges, the two shades of white or cream won't be next to each other and this bridging layer will help the pattern papers go together just that little bit more. So that's one of my favorite uses of, um, of vellum is, is a layer that will will be the, the last layer and then everything else is piled up on top. It's also great for taking the boldness out of a pattern. So in this case, I wouldn't want to cover up the whole sheet, but you can see here how the pattern is really obvious here and a lot more subtle behind the vellum. So with either a pattern or a plain vellum, because we have um, plain white vellum in the store as well, um, you can take a pattern that's really, really bold. So say you really you have a floral or a balloon print or something that's just very loud and you like the design, but when you put your photos against it, it's just a little too much. Use a vellum layer, put your photos on top of the vellum, and that will push the pattern into the background. And you can leave it um, all covered by the vellum, or you can have some of it around the edge, but have your photo on the vellum, and, and that will keep the overwhelming pattern um, just a little bit away from the photo and give you that that little bit of a bridge in between the two. So I'm not going to use this pink and polka dot combination but I um, just wanted to show you those two papers together because I really liked how they go. For today's layout I'm going to use the cloud print and I'm still using an October afternoon background paper. This one is from Woodland Park, which actually has clouds in the collection. So that was kind of what drew my um, attention to take the cloud print from Dear Lizzie and put it with October Afternoon Woodland Park. Um, but I want to use the B side, which has this red and cream diagonal stripe with the aqua from the vellum. I love red, white, and aqua together as a combination. Um, I don't use it all of the time. Um, I tend to put pink with aqua or turquoise, but when I do remember and put red with it, I really like the look. So I'm going to go with that color scheme today. There's a third Dear Lizzie pattern or pattern vellum in the shop. It's a white base with gold metallic dots on it. So I'll link that one up in the product list as well. Um, if you're looking for something with a bit more shimmer or shine. And then there are also smaller vellum elements. So um, you can get little vellum envelopes. And I wanted to highlight this particular set because these are in the 50% off sale at the moment. A lot of the, um, a lot of vellum elements are on some sort of sale at the moment. Plain vellum is in the hot product sale this week. There's all sorts of goodies going on there. Um, but this, you get 12 vellum envelopes in this little set. Um, and there are four colors, red, green, silver, and white. So I'm going to be using one of the white ones on today's layout, I think. And 
but you get all of those. You get 12, and they are in the 50% off sale right now. So they're by American Crafts, um, and if you search vellum, they'll come up, but I'll also link them in the product list at Two Beads underneath this project. And because they're in Christmas colors, they'd be great for advent calendars, Christmas cards, any sort of Christmas crafting. Look great as fancy two from tags, and of course on Christmas um, scrapbook pages and all sorts of things like that. So um, have a look for those if you want uh, some envelopes in different colors. You can also get just the vellum envelopes on their own in just white if you prefer just the one option rather than all sorts of different colors. Okay, I think that's probably enough about product for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and get started with this layout and take the branding strips off and get the vellum cut to a smaller size. I'm just going to be working with the top part of the page for the most part today. I started with the vellum and cut it to 6 inches by 11 so that I knew it would fit here at the top half of the page and have a little bit of frame around the edge. And then with vellum the trick is always how do you use the adhesive or where do you place the adhesive so that it won't show. I know that I'm going to be layering things on top here in the middle so that's where I'm going to use just my regular adhesive and that will hold it in place and then I don't have to worry about the fact that it's going to show through because I'm going to put things on top. Now if you need to adhere your vellum in a way where it won't show at all then you want to look for the most even and clear adhesive option you have in your adhesive arsenal as it were. Um, so sometimes clear double-sided tape is um, is the most useful and there there is one out there called vellum tape so you can give that a try but I almost always end up covering part of it up so this just works um, best for me and I really like how the vellum looks a bit a bit more feathery at the edges where it's lifted up off the paper rather than smashed down flat so for me that's the best option but you could also do things like use things that aren't glue so you can staple it you can stitch it you can add brads all sorts of things like that if um, if you're really new to using vellum and you you're a little stuck with how to attach it without it showing now Next step for me is that I just grabbed lots of different scraps from um, from my offcuts and scraps basket and just picked anything that was aqua or red and cut it from whatever size it was into a nice even block. So if it was kind of L-shaped or punched apart or something like that, just cut it down into a nice even shape. And that and that gave me these pieces as a result. And my photos for this page are, it's a little strip of school photos. So it's like this. And I left this one edge um, at the moment because that's how it came in the, in the little packet that you get of school photos. Um, I might trim it so that it's even with the others or I might leave it and add some staples or something to that side. So I haven't trimmed it at the moment. But I know I'm dealing with a horizontal mix of images. Um, so now I'm just going to take these and figure out what's the best way to layer them up. I want to intersperse, so right now I've got aqua separate from red and I want to mix that up. I know I have some pieces that are wider, so this one is actually wider than the vellum. Um, and there's a mix of brands. There's Studio Calico with the alphabet print. This one with the polka dot is Jenny, Jenny Bolin Wren collection. This one is from October Afternoon, this one's from Webster's Pages, and this one is American Crafts in the Shoreline Collection. So, let's see if I can get these matched up. So, I basically want to keep these straight, and I want to make sure that enough of the vellum shows that you can still see the cloud pattern. And then I'll just start moving them around and layering things up. But these are all from my scraps, so I'm not too worried if I end up covering up quite a lot of any one pattern. Otherwise they were just sitting there and not being used. Oh, 
I want this corner to show so that you can see that that red is a bigger block. So just move this down a little bit. Now there's a bit more obvious piece of that. And then this one all the way across, I think. Yeah. So just really easy layering and not, not really stopping to overthink it. Just take lots of, um, of off cuts, those extra bits and pieces that you already have cut, even them down so that they're nice rectangles, and then stack them up and see how, how they best go, kind of alternate so that your colors are um, mixed in there. And then I'm going to add the photos over the top, and I want to overlap so that lots of layers are showing. And I think I'll add it right about there. And I'll go ahead and just decide that I'm going to leave that corner a little bit bigger and add something there. So now I have lots of layers of paper, that vellum in the background, you can't see the adhesive on the vellum, and, and that softens the look of that paper and it makes it a little easier to match all these different patterned papers that have different tones of cream and white because they're not um, right next to that diagonal. So time to start thinking about a title, some writing, and some embellishment. So I have some different bits and pieces ready to go. I have that vellum envelope and that actually might be what ends up here on the corner piece. I'm not quite sure yet. It might go horizontally instead. So I have that piece. I have um, a little note to self card that comes on a big sheet of all different cards from Jelly Bean Soup. A little Polaroid from Dear Lizzie. And there are two different Polaroid sheets from Dear Lizzie at the moment because there's this one in the um, in the Neapolitan collection, and both of them, both pa papers are a 12 by 12 with lots of Polaroids. So that one's from Dear Lizzie, but there's also a new one in Fifth and Frolic, which is a bit more watercolor in design, um, as if you took a watercolor uh, paint and painted the, the shape of the frame. So something a little different. And then I have these stickers from Jenny Boland Studio, and I wanted to tuck one of these in. So I think I'll just pop that behind the photo there and I'll add a foam square or two behind here to give the top of it just a little bit more dimension so that it's not all smashed flat to the page. Oops. To move that one down a bit. There we go. And for my title, I didn't really have a good match to the red. So I have some aqua mini market letters and then the mistable thickers. And I'm going to use some red ink to um, make them match the, uh, the pattern papers. Finding a place for the writing made uh, makes a good starting point to go with the title and the embellishment and everything else from there. So I'm working on a sort of L shape or a corner shaped piece and just tucked the journaling card underneath one of the layers, added all my writing and then everything else I can go from there. I thought I might just use the word photo as part of my title so I can add my additional letters up here um, to explain that, th well the writing explains how um, you get school photos as a teacher just in the same way that you do as a student. Um, so I want to make a title that indicates that in some way. And I'm going to use um, red ink um, to, to color the letters that I want to use from these thickers. So now I have my title at the top and bottom of this grouping. And just keep in mind that when you place the colored letters when you've added the ink yourself and when you place them on the page you will end up with ink on your fingers so worthwhile stopping a minute before you pick up another element and it's white and it ends up with um, red 
fingerprints on it or whatever color of ink you've been using. So just a little heads up there, I may have learned from personal experience. So now I want to add a little bit of embellishment including my um, vellum envelope and I'm just going to add a little bit more horizontal element here. I know there's quite a lot of, of horizontal going on um, but I wanted to bring in a little bit of this, oh I've got it upside down, and um, some red here at the bottom just to kind of punctuate the bottom of the column and then repeat that at the top with the vellum which also is another way you can attach vellum with washi tape of course. You can just tape it into place. So I've got two of those and that leaves me a good place to put a third one over here so that now those three places of washi tape form a little visual triangle. And I know I'm I'm letting that tape go quite far over the photo, but because it's the same one and this is the picture that has the kind of scuff marks and scratches on it, I'm okay with that. But obviously you could just leave it so that it didn't come onto the photo itself if you prefer not to have the tape on top of the picture. Okay, so that gives me three little areas to work with. I want to include my envelope, so I'm looking for the best spot for that. I think I'm going to add it here and perhaps I could, let me have a look, I'm wondering what it would look like with the tape over the envelope rather than under. Actually that works quite well, I think I'll go with that. Um, and then I wanted to also have some twine with the envelope before I thought about the washi tape, so I'll just wrap it over the top. And tie this in a little bow. And then it's time to figure out what to go inside the vellum envelope. Now, normally, quite often I use vellum envelopes to hold journaling, but I've already added the journaling on this page. And I don't have more that I want to write necessarily for these particular photos. So in this case, I'm going to use the vellum envelope purely as embellishment. And I've grabbed a punch that I got when I was teaching and I started using it on school themed pages. And I haven't used it for much else. It's an apple punch from Martha Stewart. <laughs> and when I was teaching, of course, Apples are the things that um, you end up with in all sorts of little teacher motif uh, or teacher things. It's always an apple motif. So I started adding those sorts of things to um, to my pages. But I, what I don't want is something that just has, oh, here's a giant apple. I, I want it to be a bit more subtle than that. So what I'm thinking is that I could put some apples inside the envelope and the vellum will be just enough to shade it and uh, have it not scream apples. So I'm just going to cut them or punch them from some of the same pattern papers I've already used. So I'll try two little red apples. Oh, it's easier to work in odd numbers, so I'll just do a third one. To make the two-tone apple embellishments, I've just cut um, six apples, I want to make three, and I've punched them from different colors. And this is actually the same paper, so I've just turned the punch over and done three more because all I want is the little top piece, the stem and the leaf. So just take my scissors and cut away the small piece that I want on, um, on the base. And then I just roll my adhesive so that I can just attach that tiny piece directly to the roller and peel off the dots. And then I can bring it over to the larger piece and line it up. So that then I end up with both colors on the same piece 
really, really easy. Now with more intricate punch designs, you can do all sorts of, of layering like that, but I just want three really simple apples with the red body of the apple and then a contrasting color of the leaf. Finished the little apple um, embellishment in the pocket. I've just added the apples with a pop dot behind so that they just fit inside. And then there's actually, these envelopes have glue, so I can just, it's um, just like what's on an envelope. So I can seal that up, or I can staple it, I can leave it, I think, um, in this case. Um, I'll have a look and see how, how I like it once all the details done. I might put a staple through there, but I, I quite like it just plain, I think. So with that bit done, I'm just going to add a few tiny little finishing touches to give it a little bit of dimension on top and um, have all those little layers and the vellum behind it. For the finishing embellishment, I wanted to repeat that idea of the mistable thickers, but in a shape. So I've pulled out the star shapes and used some blue ink to turn that kind of a bluish aqua color. And then I wanted to be able to bring the red in as well. So I'm using a polka dot stamp. This is from Technique Tuesday, but you could use any polka dot stamp. And the same red ink that I used on the title. And then I'm just going to move my small stars here so that I can stamp on them and not the others on the sheet. I'm just stamping the red ink right over the blue and that gives me some embellishments that include both colors. I'll just repeat that with the larger stamp. This one's wider than the background or than the stamp so I'll just use the clear block to be able to see through. And then I can add in those to the embellishment and separate them on the page. So I have those three different areas where I use the washi tape. So I'm thinking that I will include one star with each of those. so that they go in the same places. And I could add more and more embellishment here. I'm thinking that I will just finish off with a little bit of glitter. So I'm going to use some liquid adhesive and just do three little dots around each of the stars. And then I'll come back and cover that in glitter to match and that'll be everything all done. My glitter is a slightly darker shade but I think it will still work because in just that small amount it'll just be a little saturated bit of color. So just cover the glue with the sparkle and then shake off any extra and pour it back into the jar. So here's my completed page for this week and your challenge is to use vellum on your own layout and then share it with us in the gallery. You've got all week to do that and please do check out the store. A link, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link underneath so you can pop over to Two Peas and below the video you'll see a big shopping list including all the different vellum elements we have in the store at Two Peas in a Bucket. Thanks so much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.